What's up guys, Zeus here with another video. Um, quick reminder that if you do like what you're watching, like and comment on the video. And if you want to see more of me, subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell. So that way then you guys get a notification of when I upload a new video. Also, I'm going to preach this until the day I die. Join my Discord server if you guys want. Consensually, of course. But yeah discord server is always here you know if you guys ever want to join if you haven't joined already join i think it would be really nice for people who haven't joined there's a lot of cool people there mods are nice you know you can make some new friends you know but yeah so this is going to be let's talk number four and as of the time of this recording it is currently january 6th and it's like about three in the morning for me i am now with my new change in schedule i am going to be recording videos in bulk so as of the time of this recording it is january 6th as of when you guys will see the video that is whenever i'm able to finish editing the video and then on the day of upload that's when you guys will see it but for me right now this is i'm recording this right now as of wednesday january 6th but yeah this is a so for this let's talk video i want to talk on balancing and when i say balancing i mean i want to speak about how the game has been working on making the game more and more fair because if we're gonna have it all out in the air this game is not fair low tiers the game is too hunter sided because of the fact that the low tiers they don't know how to play the game properly and they're still learning but once we get the high tiers the game is heavily survivor sided because all of the high tiers they know how to play the game properly and at that with all the broken characters in this game it kind of just makes it even worse it does so doesn't help the fact that the devs are nerfing characters, nerfing, pseudo buffing, however you feel about it, the game is nerfing slash buffing characters that don't need to be nerfed and or buffed. It just doesn't help. It just makes the of... more irrelevant characters even more irrelevant. And if they're not meta, kind of just makes it even worse because now it's just like, oh, for hunters and high tiers, you're just going to be seeing the same like seven or eight characters every single match gonna be seeing the same mechanic forward merc and gravekeeper strat or you're gonna be seeing at least double rescuers one decoder and then a kiter or a harasser kiter you you know you guys get the point here it's just the game is doing a horrible job in balancing and my first example with that is going to be wildling now wildling was a character that people had mixed emotions about at least on my end me personally from my clan we had a wildling our clan has a wildling main he was the number one wildling for a while i don't know how long he was the number one wildling but he was the number one wildling and that was pre nerf buff wildling beforehand now when wildling first got his rework i was all for it like i was like oh wildling got a buff you know he can be used now he's not as garbage as he was before you know while my clan mate he was talking about how wildling was nerfed and i was just like why do you think wildling got nerfed because this that and the third happened and wildling is now 10 times better and then after that he told me to look at it from a different perspective he told me to look at it from a point of view of what wildling is actually supposed to be wildling was not a character to be made for decoding or to be like promoting cypher rush wildling was a character that was meant to harass the hunter and extend kites like a forward which speak of the devil forward gets a good stun there but wildling wasn't made to promote cypher rush slash to be like a decoder or like a sub decoder when accelerated decoding came in or whatever wildling was made for the sole purpose of harassing and when i viewed it from that lens they kind of did nerf him like they killed his harassing ability he can only do about now two to three pushes per like bore his bore lasts 60 seconds instead of the 90 and it just kind of killed his character in a sense because they tried to make wildling easier for the players that 
don't know how to play wildling like a good wildling will not miss their push unless they either get outplayed by the hunter or the hunter has excitement in which case then yeah that's tough but like otherwise that's just not how it goes like they gave wildling that like 40 percent rage increase so that way then when they miss their stuns or they dig stuns when they miss their pushes they can get it back and go back to harassing which is good but it's counterproductive because a good wildling already won't miss their pushes a good wildling nine times out of ten will know the timing of their pushes and know when they can push and when they can't push it's just that's just simple it's like a cowboy with his lasso it's as if like it's like if they were to give cowboy a buff for like oh when if you miss your lasso your lasso instantly comes back after three seconds like a good cowboy won't miss their lasso a good cowboy will be patient and hit the lasso and rescue you you see what i mean there like wildling was buffed in terms of usability like yes he can now decode he can promote cypher rush and a metal with that's based off of cypher rush and that's good and all but Wildling was never meant to do that to begin with. Wildling was introduced at, into the game to harass and to be a pain in the ass for the hunter. And when I saw that from that perspective, I was like, oh, wow, he actually makes a valid argument there. Wildling was never put in to harass, uh, to dig her. Wildling was never put in there to like be a decoder, like to help somebody decode like a forward is after he's done with his football. Wildling's sole purpose was made to harass that's just it his sole purpose was to harass and when you take that away from a character whose sole purpose is to harass when you take that harassing ability away by only now giving him a max of like three pushes and then after that he's out of his board it just kills it like it kills his entire fundamentality of his character like it, it just ultimately murders it but and the fact that characters like priestess mechanic seer mercenary etc they still exist without nerfs 99.9 percent .9 of the time it's kind of like devs what are you doing like you're gonna you're nerfing all the low tier characters pseudo buffing pseudo nerfing the low tier characters let me be more accurate with what i'm saying there but you guys get the point like it's not good like they're picking the characters that are not used and trying to make them more usable but ultimately killing the character as a whole like it's what they did with cowboy like cowboy when he got nerfed it was for the sake of the hunters right and it was also to make cowboy a better kiter with his lasso but cowboy's whole purpose wasn't meant to be a kiter cowboy's whole purpose was to be a harasser his entire thing was harassing and making it impossible or near to impossible for the hunter to put the survivor on the chair. That was Cowboy's purpose. Not to be a kiter, not to be a god tier kiter like he is now. So it's like the devs are not prioritizing which survivors need to be like changed. Because Priestess still exists, no change. Seer still exists no change merc still exists no change mechanic still exists gotta change and is still s tier how do you nerf a character and she's still s tier it, it doesn't make sense to me and that moves into my second point of reiterating about this game being survivor sided in high tiers hunter sided in low tiers this game needs to do revamps on characters because characters like mercenary, priestess, seer, mechanic, gravekeeper, etc. Those the, those characters, the game does not count as extreme characters. Wildling, the reason for his readjustment was because they counted him as an extreme character because of his survivability, even though he's a rescuer and rescuer's whole thing is to be is to have a high survivability because you know they're supposed to rescue so it kind of was like what was the point of it i get that they wanted to buff the character like make him more viable but like killed his essentials and obviously there's multiple point of views to look at from wildling lurf like if we look at it in terms of as i said usability when it comes to 
how he can be played obviously it's better but when it comes to in terms of what his character was actually made for it's even worse and that's why like after that i kind of see why my clanmate was talking about oh no this is a nerf not a buff as for now what the devs can do about this to be honest I'm gonna make it a separate video for that, but I will start it off right here because I already mentioned it, so I might as well just start talking about it now. So, the devs can do either one of two things. They can either do type character nerfs or they can just straight up nerf the characters in general. As for nerfing the characters in general, we're gonna start off with every hunter's favorite character to shit on, Priestess. Priestess is just absurd. Let's let's get that. Priestess is absurd. She she needs to go somewhere because you're in if she she just needs to go to a big ass area, you know, go to a place that goes through a building that goes that covers a long distance, border through that, and boom, she cuts eyesight, she can kite, she gets distance, all of the above. I'd say to nerf priestess. 15 second cooldown in between every portal keep the keep keep the amount of port keep the regular like charge up but give her a cooldown for her portal usage in between don't make it spammable because you being able to spam three portals at once especially against a person that knows how to kite already um numer you're a perfect example of this in that 1v1 video just as a reference if you watched it you, you know you know what happened but that's like a prime example Give her a 15 second cooldown between portals and for the love of God, get rid of super portals. Literally get, get rid of it. That's a hot take. I understand, but no, super portals, it, it's pretty much, it's a football without a stun. Super portals can literally change the entire game. That That's how bad it is. Super portals can literally change a win to a loss just like that, just because they're able to get across the map. Because if you don't have TP, and they're across the map priestess heals if there's more than one survivor they can rush the heal get the full heal and from there the survivor that it could have been dead on chair or would have died is now rotating halfway across the map and now you either spend the rest of the match searching for that survivor or you have to rotate to an entirely new target while that survivor that you were originally on gets to help promote the cypher rush it's just not fair super portals need to be removed like get just remove super portals from the game like it, it has to go it's just not fair as well priestess also decoding debuff for the love of god she is too op when it comes to her kiting to only have a 10 percent decode debuff now the only reason i'm fine with it now is because they made it during a game like a period in the game where the game was actually hunter sided like during like the early like during season 9s 10 11 to a certain extent that's when the game was hunter sided so i'm like okay you know what fine fair but now nah she needs to have like a 20 percent deco debuff she, she needs that she needs like a 15 20 percent deco debuff because it's not okay what she can do and then give a max distance that her portal like Portals should not be defying the laws of physics. Like going, like you, like I know priestess means out there. You guys know you guys can just put down a pallet and then portal through that, and then after that the pallet will extend the distance of the portal. Like that's not fair. So yeah, do all of that for priestess, and sure it will be will be chilling. Mechanic, her doll should only be able to decode one cipher at max. That's it maybe one and a half but if she can do that there should be no time for her to open up the gate and if they are preserving her to open up gate then one cypher at max being able to decode basically about two ciphers and open up the gate is not fair it's going up against five survivors not to mention that the bot doesn't get affected by a decoding debuff at all it's just not fair seer Oh God, I'm gonna say this in the nicest way possible because I know Seer mains out there are going to be mad. They're going to be, oh, why would you suggest this? 
get rid of Sears early game out. And you want to know why I say get rid of Sears early game owl because Sears early game owl can be the difference between a 20 second kite and an 80 second kite. It is that severe. Make him work for it like painter where painter needs to look at the hunter. Then he can start gaining his painting. Now he starts off the match with the damn owl because then it's virtually because then he pretty much guarantees about a 40 to 60 second kite maybe 80 seconds if the person's actually decent at kiting he, he guarantees a kite that will be enough for the team to at least have decent sight for us for late game it's just that simple forward i can't even say much about forward forward is balanced in his own right like it's it's hard to counter a good forward but forward is balanced in the sense for his own right there's nothing you can really change about forward to be honest they already got rid of like how the original amount of football and gave us what we have now. As for mercenary, give a cooldown between elbow pads because rescuing should not be something that is a should be looked at upon as a chore. Rescuing should be something that is, should have pressure on it. Like a forward, when you're football rescuing, there's that pressure like, oh, I need to make sure I hit this stunt. I need to make sure I help my team escape. Forward feels that pressure. Cowboy, you feel that pressure. With mercenary, there's no, there, there's none of that pressure because elbow pads, you can just elbow pad in, rescue, elbow pad out. That's simple. It, it, there's no skill to it. Like It's just literal brain dead. So yes, give a cooldown between Merc so that way then he actually has to be wise with his elbow pads and he can't just spam them. Because not also not suggesting this because you're not supposed to chase a mercenary, but also as another example of why, like when you chase a mercenary, by the time you catch up to him after using one elbow pad, you can only just use the second one. So it's like, that's why they don't chase mercenaries, but it's like, damn, if you're going against a team comp like Fort Rescuer, where it's grave officer forward merc you don't got a lot of options because everyone there has survivability so yeah um but those are just my ideas on how the devs could at least balance the game like also these are like major they're not anything minor these are like major implements that would severely change the game but if we're going to speak in all honesty, the game's description, when you, you know, press to download it, it says asymmetrical. This isn't supposed to be a fair game. This game is supposed to be in the hunter's favor most of the time. This game should not be in the survivor's favor the way it is. This is an asymmetrical game. So, yes, I do stick with what I think, and I do stick with the nurse that I think should be implemented. Anyways... Hope you guys enjoy the video. Tell me what you guys think that NetEase can do to balance this game out. Anyways. Well, I'm Zeus. Peace out. Love y'all. Hope you all start off the new year great.